This is my makeshift hatching to cover up all the rust and keep the cold air out and hot air out for that matter and uh, also rain and uh, splashed up water from the road. All it is is um, insulation material like a bubble pack with aluminum on either side. I have to take it up to Harrell Motor Sales up in uh, Waynesville and get Ted to press the old shaft out of it and put a new one in. I just had to film this. Okay. I just had to record this for history. <laughs> Place, <laughs> well, 
mind. You need a light? Yeah, if you don't mind. <laughs> uh -oh. It's going to be a rare sight around here. Ted's going to be closing down in October. It'll be a sad day. installing the water pump which Ted rebuilt for me.
just about ready to remove the clutch slave cylinder. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's Well, there it is, the master cylinder, the clutch master cylinder. What a mess. So, let's begin the rebuild. Ugh, look at that. Quite disgusting. Okay. Fluid! Line up that little piece of metal so I don't do what I did with the other one. In case you're wondering what's going on here, I'm rebuilding the brakes. I've already cleaned and honed that cylinder. I'm getting ready to put a new seal on this piston and then put it all back together. As you can see, this rim is quite soaked in fluid, as are these brake shoes. This was part of my problem, probably where the leak originated in one of the cylinders. And eventually the master cylinder reservoir ran dry and sucked air into the system. And that's why I was ex I was experiencing brake fade very badly. It was getting really scary. I about hit a building in a car. That's when I decided to take it off the road. All the new parts came in, and I've already installed a new brake cylinder on the left front wheel, and getting ready to remove the rear brake cylinders, the rear wheel cylinders, and remove them and replace both of them. That way I won't have to worry about it. All right, Ashlyn, what, what do you call my rover? Meat wagon. A what? Meat wagon. <laughs> Who told you that was a meat wagon? Cody. He did. Cody did? Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, Cody, look. Your boss is a pair of little... Let's stand right there, baby. Boss is a pair of little... Cody, it's in there somewhere. Look. Don't just... 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 Don't
No, it's a big wrench. I found it. And you're a big Yep. I found it up there. A what, Cody? You're a big French guy, too. A French guy? Yeah, you are. Okay, or did you say French fry? Yeah, you're a big French fry. <laughs> yeah, you're a big French fry. I'm going to say this. Oh, okay, and a French fry and I drive a meat wagon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Don't turn that off, Cody. Daddy, look at me! Well, the brakes are finished. The hub's back on. Now all I gotta do is hope that the drum will fit and the wheel will go back on. Well, it's finally finished. I had to replace the uh, inner hub seal and pack the bearings and put in the new brake shoes and the brake uh, slave cylinder. Yep, I ran into some more trouble. Had to replace the entire uh, passenger side front brake line because the end was so rusted together it broke off when I tried to loosen it. So over the last couple of hours I've replaced it along with eating Thanksgiving dinner. Now I'm going to try to bleed the system again and hope it works. Oh, and also, I had to replace the small front uh, brake line that connects both cylinders on the same front wheel. Huh. Because it's fun a week. Oh well, guess I, what I said about Murphy's Law was right. Well, the ambulance is on the porch again, and it's not been a week and a half since I took it off the porch to re redo all the brakes. This time, it's not the brakes. Happens to be the right rear axle snapped off. Nice clean brake. Problem is, where am I going to find one on a Sunday when I'm supposed to be at work? Well, I guess I need to pull that nasty, dirty differential out of there. Looks like I got a busted pinion seal. Oh well, here goes. Well, I got the differential out. Everything in there looks okay. Give it a good cleaning before I put it back in. And there's the culprit. Arg. Well, it's working slowly. Success. Whew. That was fun. And it worked. Thank you, Toyota.
process of cleaning out the rover and prepping it for uh, an annual hunting trip to the coast of North Carolina, I've discovered these little hidden compartments. I'm sure they're not meant to be a compartment per se, but uh, I did find them back behind the seats here uh, between the seat box and the bulk, the ambulance bulkhead. No, not, they were full of dirt and all kinds of other nasty grime. But I did find some things that were quite interesting. Well, first this unusual piece of burlap material. I'm really not even sure if it's burlap. It might be English burlap. Very rotted. The uh, top to a milk uh, container it says on there, Pasteurized milk, the creamery, and then I can't make out the word under creamery. Just a piece of tin foil for sealing the milk. This is probably one of the most interesting things. A ticket stub says Merseyside, passenger transport executive, issued subject to road traffic acts and regulations and it doesn't have stamp whether it was an adult or a child. On the back, new zone tickets. Economy travel for regular travelers by bus, rail, or ferry. Very interesting. Some matches, but yet these are American matches. Obviously acquired uh, some point after the rover came to the United States. This is very interesting. This is the cap from Smarties. Whatever those are. Could be candy. Uh, it could be a medical some type of medical supply because it does look very familiar. It looks like something uh, used in the veterinary profession that would cover the top of a uh, insulin bottle possibly. Not really sure. And this little device I did find in the back of the ambulance in the heat box. Obviously it would fallen down in there. It looks like the top to a bottle of some type of solution uh, that would have been drawn out with a syringe pressed down through the rubber pad that is nice and hardened with age here. Not sure though. This of course is, if you look closely, very self-explanatory rolled up medical gauze. Could that be a blood stain? It's very old and brittle. This I'm really not sure what it is. Looks like one of those little glue containers for gluing a rear view mirror onto your mirror. I mean window. AME 0.5. Very, very hardened and old. Here's some a candy bar wrapper, classic, it appears to have said. Crunchy honeycomb biscuits with smooth buttercream filling. Mmm, it is made in England by Fox Biscuits. Wrigley's Double Mint Chewing Gum. Thing interesting about this is it says on the back, keep your country tidy. And then in three other languages, it's like German, possibly French and Dutch, maybe. Juicy fruit. I would say though that this has to be the most interesting find. Yes, it's a 10 pence. I'm going to keep that in the rover. Good luck charm, I guess you could say. I found it over to the right of the steering column, down in the dashboard under a bunch of old bolts.
got me going. our destination for the night the place called Sims which is in the middle of nowhere and we just happen to be in the middle of a large plowed soybean field Mark has become stashed on the rack for the night I'm going to sleep here and it's what what time is it about uh, 1 a.m. 1 a.m. okay Well, it's morning in the soybean field. And here we are. Decided to watch a little TV. Well, I'll have to say I'm very happy with the Rover and its sleeping capabilities. A whole lot cheaper than staying in a hotel. Although, I had to duct tape the vents because it was raining last night a little bit and we were afraid that uh, it was gonna rain in because they do leak. I'm gonna have to build some shrouds of some type to cover them during rainy conditions. We also had to close all the windows because the mosquitoes in this area are quite bad. Well, I think the rover's warmed up and the rider's ready to go, so I think we better head out.